All right, so we're gonna start today. Um, today's topic is on obesity, and it's a really interesting um, kind of condition that really uh, pulls together what I think uh, the all the different systems that we've covered so far in class. So your neurological system, your gastrointestinal system, your microbiome, and your endocrine. This disorder um, and condition has all of those factors in play. And we'll talk about that, kind of the molecular controls of that um, later on in this class. But w one thing I really wanted to point out is, um, is this picture right here. So this is a picture of the Pima Indian tribe. This is a picture of the Pima Indians in about the early 1900s. And this is a picture of the Pima Indians today. And they are actually uh, what's considered a textbook case of, of why obesity is affecting the modern world, okay? And uh, so I'll show you a little clip in a, in, a, in a second, but I do want to put this in context. So these are Indians that traditionally have lived a fairly uh, sparse food lifestyle. They don't get access to a lot of food. So the traditional homeland is in southern Arizona. And what's really interesting about that is about 1,000 years ago, about a couple hundred of the Indians broke off from the main tribe, which is still in Arizona, and moved down south to here in central Mexico. So there's actually two separate communities of Pima Indians currently in, in the world today. One living in, who are American citizens who live in reservations in the areas south of Phoenix, and then one in central Mexico. They are, very, they, they are genetically um, only about 1,000 years apart, which is very short in human evolutionary time, but they are uh, two different people with two different sets of environments. And what I, what I want to show you in this video is kind of the effects of these environments on this particular tribe. You hear that? No. Hold on. Let me plug, let me plug in the audio for a second. Okay. Got that? Okay. Let's try that again from the beginning. And there's no audio. Hold on a sec. Should I try it now? Nope, not getting anything. There it goes. Nope. Hmm, that's surprising. Is it, are you sure that's the same right audio thing? It's that one. Yeah. Okay. Here, plug that in. Okay. Oh, uh oh. Sorry guys, a little technical difficulties. Um, yep, that's good. And the video coming back on? It'll come. Oh, he almost had it. Oh, the gray screen of death. Is there any way to fix that? Like, can we jiggle it? Sorry, folks, technical difficulties. Take some time to look at your plates real quick. <laughs> Come on, do it. Yeah, Shivani, I was impressed with your spit. A lot grew. I was really impressed. So. Can't the cord is not the problem. Are you sure it's the connection of the computer? All right. Hmm. All right, I think we're just going to have to skip this video, but it's very, yeah. all right. Yeah. 
Jesus. <sighs> Again, sorry for the technical difficulty, folks. We're going to try to fix this as soon as possible. better? That's much better. Okay, let's do that. Is your computer? All right. Computer sucks. All right. All right. Want to change the audio in there, too? Do you have more audio? Huh? Do you have more audio? What do you mean, more audio? No, that's a bit. Okay? All right. So, guys? We'll do this real quick. And why is this not? There it goes. OK. OK. Today, the Arizona Pima share the American culture, the American lifestyle, and the American diet. But in one important respect, they've outdone their fellow Americans. They are now the fattest population group in the fattest country on earth. Second like fast country. In the I earth. have uh, 1245, 145, and 245. That's on the 11th. In this state of the art hospital, the Pima cope with diseases that doctors have linked to obesity hypertension, high blood pressure, several forms of cancer, bone, joint, and muscle strains, sleep apnea, and diabetes. A staggering 60% of Pima adults are diabetic. High in the Sierra Madre Mountains of northern Mexico, there's another Pima community of just 700 people whose ancestors separated from the main tribe and migrated here nearly a thousand years ago. These Pima of the Sierra Madre are, on average, 60 pounds lighter than their American cousins. Diabetes and obesity are virtually unknown here. The only thing that distinguishes the two groups is lifestyle. The Mexican Pima farm and live as their ancestors did. There are no labor-saving devices here, not even electricity or piped water. You walk, you ride, and if you're late for school like Maria Rande Cedro, you run all the way, three miles. Imagine doing that every day. The Mexican Pima spend 22 hours a week in hard physical exercise. In Arizona, the figure is less than two. And here they eat a traditional diet of fruit, vegetables, and corn tortillas, high in fiber and low in animal fat. For scientists, the striking physical difference between the two branches of the Pima nation perfectly illustrates the impact of modern living on weight and health. Okay, so I wanted to show that video because it's actually a really good point that this video makes, that genetically, we as human beings um, are not built for the modern world that we live in, okay? We are genetically designed as hunter-gatherers who live in environments where we have very few sources of food. So when we find food, we are trained to gorge, we are um, conditioned and environmentally adapted to be really good at storing fat and storing energy. Because we don't know, environmentally speaking, evolutionary speaking, when we're going to get another source of food. Right? The modern world doesn't have that problem. In fact, we have the exact opposite problem, where there's food available all the time. So it's our evolutionary histories meeting this modern reality, which our bodies aren't designed to really cope with. The Pima are great, uh, probably the most the best kind of genetic example of that. 
they, again, live in a very, historically speaking, genetically uh, food sparse environment. And their bodies are very well genetically adapted via nat natural selection over time to basically be really good at storing fat. Right? Because they, again, look, look at their historical environment. Not a lot of fat, not a lot of energy uh, food sources. Put them in the modern world, put them with modern conveniences, put them with modern food. They get really good at that. All right? So they're, really, they're an extreme outlier, and this is why this, these populations in Arizona and Central Mexico make for a really fascinating scientific study. But it's kind of a, it speaks to what's actually happening with uh, human beings in general. We are not designed for the modern uh, food environment that we currently live in. Right? So it, it falls on us to be conscious of that. I just want to drive that point home. So 